I just want your reaction. I've told friends of mine when we've debated this issue or issues around this that uh, you're too caught up in what people think about you mm. and not what people think about God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I say that is because we prioritize, oh, well, you can't be a Christian if you're racist. And again, we've put that sin, of which we all are capable of and all have to some degree biases that could be described as racism. We all have, but, but somehow, like, if a white person has a bias, it, it's, it's, that's the unforgivable sin. We prioritize that, that that's, and that's, that uh, totally discredits their Christianity. But I could sit here and be an adulterer. I could mm -hmm. be lost in gluttony. I could be lost in strip clubs and all. That doesn't invalidate my Christianity. But mm. if, if somebody has a bias, which trust me, I have biases. My father had biases. My mama has biases. Everybody I know, Uncle Jimmy, everybody I know has some sort of bias. Right. And so I've told people repeatedly, hey man, instead of evaluating people on how they feel about you, Evaluate them on how they feel about God, because if they have some sort of faith in God, God's going to work on these sins mm. within them. God can fix that because right. he's certainly working on my sins. And, and so anyway, I just want your reaction to that. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, part of the problem is how um, how people have stretched the term racism um, to a point where it basically fits over anything. Um, there was a point when someone called someone a racist, you, you got a, a clear picture of what the party that was being accused might have done to, to warrant that label. But now people will say s someone is racist or participating in racism, even if the person doesn't show any animus or racial bias. So that's why I think one of the things that you know many theologians, Christian theologians need to do is actually start using biblical terms. So if they'd say the word racist, are we talking about ethnic hatred? Are we talking about ethnic partiality where you, you treat one you know person from one group different than, than the other group? Um, I, I think you know clarifying terms is important. I also think starting from a position where we see um, all of us as as you know coming from the same creator. Um, and again, if you if you believe what the scripture says, you know, it says that God, out of, of one man, God created basically all men of, of different nations and marked out their boundaries and where and when they would live. If, if you start from that position, um, I think you, you end up um, seeing issues of race or ethnicity or nationality um, in a very different way than the way we talk about them now. Um, and I, so I think ultimately all people have to begin to see the humanity in others and not assume that there's only one group that is capable of, you know, the, the, the sin of racism or ethnic hatred. Um, and, I, and I think we just need to, to get back to a point where we're starting to speak common language because so much of the problem that we have right now is about language and it's about wordplay. And you can see, you know, when last year the, the Smithsonian, um, the African American History Museum here in DC put out that infographic and they listed things like objectivity and rational thought and the nuclear family as aspects of whiteness and, and white supremacy culture. Um, that, that, those, are, those are things that no one 30 years ago would have recognized. So a big part of what we're doing is engaging in uh, language wars. And, and I think we just need to get back to, to thinking more clearly, uh, and particularly for Christians, more biblically about some of these issues.